you wish to remind you that this contest is being played for young athletes, not professionals, who are trying to represent themselves as school the best of their ability. Please never not to jeer, criticize, or downgrade players, coaches, or the umpires. For your safety, we ask that you be alert to foul balls, and smoking is not allowed at Campanelli Stadium. Please, let's all make this event a positive experience for all. Here are the umpires for today's game. The third base umpire is Mr. Waller. The first base umpire is Mr. Walker. And calling the balls and strikes is Mr. McCarthy. And now introducing the participants of today's game, we start with the visiting team, Westwood Wolverine. Please welcome their head coach, Rob Flynn. Assistant coach, Bob Hopper. Dave Abdu. And Rob Patson. Their fat boy is Jake Abdu. And now uh, here's the starting lineup for the Westwood Wolverines. Leading off will be the shortstop, number five, Jimmy Bean. Batting second, playing left field, number seven, Dan Delore. Batting third, playing second base, number two, Jack Cannon. The cleanup hitter is the first baseman, number 10, Shane Cronin. The pitcher will bat fifth, number 13, Amy Doherty. Batting sixth is the designated hitter, number 14, Kevin McDonald. Batting seventh is the third baseman, number 9, Cal Marino. The right fielder will bat eighth, number 6, Cam Dayton. The center fielder will bat ninth, number 18, Ryan Shea. And catching for Westwood is number 22, Jacob Wynn. We welcome the rest of the Westwood Wolverine. And now introducing the home team, Hopkinson Hillers. We welcome their head coach, Steve Simos. Assistant coaches, John Zach, Brent McKenzie, Mark Sanborn, and Peter Marceau. And now here's today's starting lineup. Leading off will be the shortstop, number 12, Ben McKenzie. Batting second is the catcher, number two, Steve Simos. Batting third, playing center field, number 10, Tommy Andersoni. The cleanup hitter is number 18, Ronnie Shamos, third base. The right fielder will bat fifth, number 19, Connor Kelly. The left fielder will bat sixth, number four, Drew Rancatori. Batting seventh is the pitcher, number seven, Brendan Kelly. Batting eighth is the designated hitter, number 20, Rob Paliuka. And the second baseman will bat ninth, number eight, Paul Glasner. Playing first base today for hockey bitters, number 14, Ryan Kester. Please welcome the rest of the Hockington Hillers. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you remain seated for a special announcement. Our great nation has persevered through the leadership and sacrifices of men and women who have served or are currently serving in our armed forces. At this time, we invite both veterans and current military personnel to please stand so that we all may properly thank you for your service. On behalf of all of us here, thank you for your service to our country. And now, ladies and gentlemen, would you all please rise and remove your hats as we are in America, and those who have defended or are currently defending our freedom with the play of our national anthem.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the beautiful Campanelli Stadium here in Brockton, Massachusetts for the South Division II sectional finals between the Westwood Wolverines, who are the seven seed, and the first seeded Hopkinton Hillers. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call, Joe Frackleton on camera, and it is a beautiful sunny day here in Brockton. Temperatures are in the low 70s, expected to rise throughout the day. Perfect weather for baseball. Let's get right to it. It's Brendan Kelly pitching for the Hillers. The Westwood lineup consists of Jimmy Bean, who's the shortstop. He'll start things off. He's set to step in. Batting second is the left fielder, Dan Delory. Batting third is Jack Hannon, the second baseman. Shane Cronin, the first baseman, hitting cleanup. Eamon Doherty, the pitcher, hitting fifth. Batting sixth is the DH, Kevin McDonald. Cal Guarino, the third baseman, hitting seventh. Cam Dayton, the right fielder, hitting eighth. And Ryan Shea, the center fielder, hitting ninth. As Kelly set to deliver the first pitch of the game, and it's just a little bit low, one and oh. With the Hillers defense, I send it to my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad. Thanks, Tom, and good morning. At third base, we have Ronnie Sheamus, the sophomore. Shortstop, Ben McKenzie, the captain. At second base, Cole Glasper, and at first base, Ryan Kester. Left to right, Drew Rancatori, Tommy Ambersoni, and Connor Kelly. Behind the plate, Captain Steve Simos. The ball is up and outside. Catching Brendan Kelly. We've seen this movie before, have we not, Tom? We certainly have. It's a 2-1 count on Jimmy Bean. The Hillers have won two playoff games to get to this point. A swing and a miss there, 2-2. Two and two. They defeated Milton in the quarterfinals. They had the bye in the first round, and then they took down Stoughton in Stoughton for a win in the semifinals. And now trying to get to the state championship. Is that pitch just outside? In Division II, there is no state semifinals. So the winner of this game goes right to the Division II state championship against the North champion. And that game will be this Thursday. As this is hit in the air, right side, foul. Count remains full on Jimmy Bean. Well, the book on Brendan Kelly is he starts just a little slow. He's going to find his strike zone. Work his off-speed stuff. He gets his feel for his off-speed stuff. He'll back up his slider one time, two times, three times in a row. Coach Simo's calling the pitches. And there's a walk. No. Oh, no, it's a strikeout. Jimmy Bean took off a little bit too soon to first base, and the umpire said, no, you don't. You're out. Yeah, have a seat, Jimmy Bean. Dan DeLore will step in, the left fielder. One away. Brendan throws between 84 and 86 miles an hour. This is hit in the air, left side, and it is caught by the center fielder. Who waves off Rancatori, Ambersoni making the catch. Anything to the gaps, Tommy Ambersoni's going to get it. Jack Hannon, the second baseman, will step in. He was problems the last time in Hopkinton. He was always on the bases. There's a strike. And Coach Simos mentioned when I talked to him after the Stoughton game that it's going to be an interesting matchup considering that these two teams, the two times they met up, they may have had their worst performances against well, each other both those awful. times. 15 to 11 game in Hopkinton and I wasn't there for the uh, Westwood game. A pitch just outside, one and one, two and one, excuse me. Lined up and the pitch, fouled away. Two and two. Two bounce off the backstop. Stevie Simos doesn't miss anything. He knows now what's going to happen should a ball get past him. Kelly set to deliver. And this is up the right side, picked up by the first baseman. Flip to Kelly, no problem. 
Three to one for out number three. We will head to the bottom of the first. We are scoreless here at Campanelli Stadium in Brockton on HCAM. The Hopkins and Hillers coming up on the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at the batting order. Eamon Doherty is the Westwood pitcher. The batting order for the Hillers is Ben McKenzie, the shortstop, leading off. Steve Simos, the catcher, batting second. Tommy Ambersoni, the center fielder, hitting third. Ronnie Sheamus, the third baseman, hitting cleanup. Connor Kelly, the right fielder, batting fifth. Drew Rancatori, the left fielder, hitting sixth. Brendan Kelly, the pitcher, hitting seventh. Bobby Paliuka, the DH, hitting eighth, as that pitch is in there for a strike. And Cole Glassburn, the second baseman, batting ninth. With the Westwood defense, I'll send it to Larry Sacklad right after this pitch. And the breaking ball is up high. Larry. Cal Gorino playing third base, Jimmy Bean at shortstop. John Hand at second base. Shane Cronin at first base, left to right. Swing and a miss. Dan DeLore, Ryan Shea, Cam Dayton, Jacob Wynn behind the plate, catching Eamon Doherty today. Doherty looks like he kind of short arms the ball. Breaking pitch inside. He's almost straight over the top, but he short arms it. A little unusual delivery. Set for the 2-2 pitch. And this is hit high in the air towards center field. And it is caught by Ryan Shea, one away. This field's going to hold most of the balls. 405 to dead center. 320 down the lines. Although Mr. 405 here, Stevie Simos from the Greater New Bedford Volk Tech game hit a ball 402 feet for a triple. He didn't have his Wheaties that morning. It would have been out. Line up in the pitch to Simos. Right side, fair ball. Picked up by the first baseman, and he will get there in time. Shane Cronin with the three unassisted out. I think Shane Cronin's going to uh, UMass Boston next year, if I'm not mistaken. He pitched in the game in Hopkinton. He and Brendan Kelly and both pitchers didn't last two innings. It was an awfully, awfully bad outing for both of them. Tommy Ambersoni steps in. There's a strike. As you know, if you've seen our broadcast, Tommy Ambersoni will bunt in any situation. Probably the best bunter in TVL. There's another strike. 0 oh and 2. I don't think he's bunting right now, Tom. What do you think? I can't imagine so with the bases clear. Can also hit the ball pretty well. Breaking pitch inside, a little chin music, one and two. Well, some fans from both sides making the trip out here to Brockton. Certainly a beautiful day for it. Fouled away. Heads up down there. Hopkins got about five or six coaches in the dugout today. Of course, Campanelli Stadium home to the Brockton Rocks, minor league baseball team. And that hit him. I sort of knew that was going to happen. The sophomore Ronnie Sheamus going to step in. Coach Simos thinks very highly of Sheamus. And he did have some uh, nice hits the game against Stoughton a few days back Sorry. at that neutral site. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly did. emerson has got good speed. Check it at first. Runner back safe. Well, I'd say uh, at least this is a uh, neutral site. Yeah, a neutral. <laughs> neutral. I looked it up in the dictionary what a neutral site was. That pitch outside. You might want to see uh, the run game going early, Coach Simos. Very aggressive. Doherty set to deliver. Just a little bit high there. Two and oh. MIA only gets the best as far as the umpiring crew for these games. Runner with a slight lead at first. It's Tommy Ambersoni who was hit by a pitch as this is driven into center field and it is caught by Shea for the third out of the bottom of the first. We are scoreless as we head to the top of the second on HCAM. 
Top of the second inning, Shane Cronin stepping to the plate for the Westwood Wolverines. Four, five, and six do up. Shane Cronin, Eamon Doherty, and Kevin McDonald to face Brandon Kelly. Line up and the pitch. In there for a strike. Pick the corner on that one, Tom. We got media from all over the world here today. That's right. Wonder if our fans from Florida. There is a strike. There's a little baby slider. Again, if he gets that work and watch for uh, Coach Simos to call it again and again and again. Here is the 0 2 from Kelly. Just outside. Trying to get Cronin in a chase. Brendan Kelly told me after the Stoughton game that he watched. That's fouled into the backstop. Sorry about that. He watched the Greater New Bedford Vogue Tech game from two years ago, 2017, and last year's game against Duxbury, and he did it purely for motivation. This is his third straight playoff appearance. It's foul up the right side. And he wants it, and he wants it badly. And I want it badly for him. In the greater New Bedford Volk, he had a 2-0 uh, deficit. They grabbed two runs, and they walked it off. And there's a ground ball up the middle for a base hit. Single for Cronin. That'll bring up Eamon Doherty, the pitcher. You remember that game. Did it go nine innings or eight innings, that game? I believe it was nine. It was a heartbreaker, though. Oh. It certainly was. The Hiller is hoping for a different result this year. Coach Simos predicted a low-scoring game after uh, the Stoughton game it was a 13-1 or 13-12-1 game. He's usually pretty accurate on his predictions as well. Yeah. One Ronnie Sheamus playing in on the cut of the infield. Here is the 1-0. Here's a strike. Brendan's a rhythm pitcher. It'll be 10 seconds between pitches, unless he gets in trouble. Kelly deals. There's another strike. There's the breaker. We get a good view here of the uh, break on the pitch. Set to deliver. Hit in the air over to center field, and it's caught for out number one. That'll bring up Kevin McDonald, the DH. <clears throat> no relation to Ronald. <laughs> Sorry about that, Tom. I got to give you a pun, a, pun a game. <laughs> that is in your contract. Yeah, it is my contract. We get OT starting before uh, noontime? Not you, unfortunately. All right. Check swing, he held, one and oh. Each team knows each other very, very well. There are no surprises here. This is hit in the air to the infield grass, picked up, throw to first, and he gets the out. That was a nice play by Ben McKenzie. Took there. an awkward bounce, and he's able to barehand it and flip it over to first. That's why he's a captain. That's why he's going to Bowdoin College, to be a polar bear. Cronin advances to second, two outs in the inning, and that'll bring up Cal Guarino. Polar bears are endangered species, you know. <laughs> Wolverines are useless. You know, think about Wolverines. He, you know, they do nothing. Badgers, too. There's a strike. Got away from Simos a little bit. Could you live without Wolverines? You ever think about a Wolverine? Well, it depends if you're talking about the uh, X-Men Wolverine. Talking about the four-legged Wolverines. <laughs> but you need Hillers. You can't replace a Hiller. That's true. Got to have people living on the hill. Yeah, you wouldn't have valleys if you didn't have hills. You know what I mean? Owen count, two outs in the inning. Nobody holding Cronin on. That is in there for a strike, and it got away from Simos. That allows Cronin to advance to third, a rare pass ball there. 
You giving him a pass ball? Well, it was a strike, so yeah, I think you have right. to. I give him a pass ball. It looked like a breaking ball that just uh, broke so much it ended up in the dirt after a cross home plate. We could check with the rest of the media here and have a, have a vote. Pass ball, a wild pitch in the dirt. One and two count. Kelly deals. There's strike three. Got him looking down. for out number three. Second strikeout of the day for Brandon Kelly. We will head to the bottom of the second. We are scoreless at Campanelli Stadium on HCAM. Bottom of the second inning, Connor Kelly stepping in. Five, six, and seven do up for the Hillers. Kelly Rancatori and Brandon Kelly. Good take by Connor Kelly. Coach Simos really likes this kid as a sophomore, starting in right field for most of the season. A pitch a little bit inside. Little Chandler. music, little music. Miller's so softball team falling short yesterday in their sectional semifinals matchup with Bridgewater Raynham. An eight inning, three to two loss. Three no count now on Kelly. We'll certainly talk a little bit about that game during this broadcast as well. Certainly a tough loss for the Hillers, but an incredible run. Three and one. That was a get me over strike. Kelly taken all the way. Line up and the pitch. Strike two, says the whole plate umpire. Pick the outside corner. Did Darty. Kelly had a great game against. Stoughton. There, there's strike three, got him looking. Uh, he's gonna have a seat. Drew Rancatori will step in. Next year's class president Drew Rancatori is. Got good power. Takes strike one. Up high. One and one count on Rankatori. So far, Doherty's been right around the plate. No sign of wildness early on. Just missed. Yeah, a little bit outside there. Just a little bit outside. Two and one. Fouled away. Two and two now on Rankatori. We have uh, a sighting, a celebrity, a uh, mini celebrity sighting. We've got Lou Maloney's sister off to the right. Big Lou. That pitch a little bit high. Full count now on Rankatori. One out in the inning. Bases are clear. Brendan Kelly waiting on deck. There's a walk. Bring up Brendan Kelly, the pitcher. Will they pinch run for Rankatori today? Uh, or let him gallop, what do you think? I think they're gonna keep him out there. Keep him in there? Brendan Kelly's been absolutely crushing the ball of late. Two home runs. The last two games, Milton and Stoughton. There's a strike. His father says if he goes one for three and hits a, couple of uh, hits a bomb, he's all right. Check it at first, runner back safe. My favorite player is on deck. You, everybody knows who that is. Doherty set to deliver. Inside. One and one. What do you think? Uh, Brendan hit that ball about 400 feet in Stoughton the other day? I would say that was maybe closer to 500. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it was definitely 400. Fouled away, one and two. He crushed that ball. Well, he didn't get cheated with that swing. A one and two count on Brendan Kelly. Cronin holding Rankatori on. Dorty 
Lordy deals behind Kelly, and this is going to allow Ray Katori to easily advance. I think that was a purpose pitch, Tom. What do you think? I'd say that was a wild pitch. That yeah. looked like it slipped out of his hand. Uh, I don't think so. Two and two. Let's see what Brendan could do with runner in scoring position. Help himself out here a little bit. Set to deliver. Gets a piece of this one left side, and it is caught by the third baseman, Cal Guarino. The umpire to check the ball for blood. Two away. Runner on second, Bobby Pagliuca coming to the plate, the designated hitter. The future UMass Minuteman. He's going to enjoy the dining hall down there. May run into my son on campus. All-around good kid. Swing and a miss. So far, this game is playing out just like Coach Simos thought it would. Close matchup. Doherty deals. This is hit in the air, right side foul out of play. Souvenir of the ball game. The MIA can afford it with their steep ticket prices. Oh, and two count on Paliuka. When you make 183 grand to be the ex director, you know what I mean? They can afford it. Outside. Oh, Padley Uko almost got rung up. The one two. Hit high in the air towards shallow center field, and it's caught by Ryan Shea for the third out of the inning. So after two, we are scoreless between Westwood and Hopkinton here at Campanelli Stadium on HCAM. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. Joe Frackleton on camera here at Campanelli Stadium in Brockton, the home of the Brockton Rocks for this sectional title game between the Hopkinton Hillers and Westwood as the first pitch from Kelly is going to be ball one to Cam Dayton, the right fielder. Eight, nine, and one do up for Westwood. Dayton, Shea, and Bean. Yeah, a little life out of the Westwood dugout. There's a strike. One and one. That shuts him up a little bit. Hopkinton dugout is always quiet. Coach Simos doesn't put up with anything. Kelly deals. There it is. Nice pitch there. One and two. Brendan Kelly's going to Stonehill. His coach is probably down here watching the game somewhere. Just inside. Two and two. That's the back-to-back -back call by Coach Simos. When he's feeling that breaking pitch, he'll throw it all afternoon. And this is foul. Three in a row. So Brendan pitched last June 6th against Duxbury in the quarterfinal. He didn't take the loss, but uh, he left the game after seven innings. 1-1. One, one. That is outside. He faced Charlie Kuhn, who's going off to uh, Bryant College, and uh, Pat Malampy, who took a year off, and he's committed to Army, finished it off. And this is up the middle, glove by the second baseman. Glassburn throws the first, no problem. Nice play by the Cardinal. Future Catholic University player. His coaches should be happy they're going to get a kid like Glassburn. We're happy we're going to see him at Ashland Post 77 Legion all summer. Absolutely. Ryan Shea, the center fielder, steps in. Fouled away. Another souvenir of the ball game. Oh, I almost broke one of the windows over there, but of course they have, uh, I'd say, uh, ball protected windows. Yeah, what it cost to get a luxury uh, box today for the MIAA? I don't know, a couple thousand. A couple thousand, you think they're charging? One and one is the count. One out, base is clear. The windup and the pitch from Kelly. Swing and a miss. Uh huh. I think that might have fooled him a little bit, Tom. What do you think? I think so. 
Kelly gets the sign he likes and deals. Fouled away. I still can't get over that play Stevie Simos made the other day, turning that double play. You know, just flying out of the catcher's box to back up on a double play ball, getting the ball off Bre Brenda Kelly's glove and throwing the runner out. This is hit in the air over to right field. That's going to drop down for a base hit. Shea around first, and that's where he'll stay. So a one-out single for Ryan Shea. Jimmy Bean will step in. That was one of the best plays I've ever seen a catcher make at any level. I agree. His coach, his father was so matter-of-fact. Oh, that's what catchers are supposed to do. <laughs> Back up bases. I think we know what he wanted to say. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> but he doesn't want anyone to... He didn't want to give him a big head, I think that's he right. said, right? He doesn't want anyone's ego to get too big. Runner with a bit of a lead off of first. That pitch just outside. Stevie Simos also heading to Bowden. Mackenzie and Simos won't be rooming, but they'll be eating together. This is up the left side. That's going to trickle through into left field. So it'll be two on with one out for Westwood. Dan Delory, the left fielder, will step in. That shame it's going to get a little dirty on that one. But I'm up here and he's down there. Kelly working from the stretch. Both runners with a slight lead. There's a bunt, and that's foul. He almost hit it out of yeah, he hit him in, out of the batter's box. He's out. And that is going to be a big break for the Hillers there. Delory bunted. It went up the line. As it was in fair territory, he ran into the ball. And that is an out. No appeal. Two away, Jack Hannon, the second baseman, will step in. Try to catch the Hillers napping there with that bunt. Well, that ended up being a one pitch out there. There's a strike. Umpire called that immediately. That's another play you don't see very often. You probably see it more often in girls softball when they run up to try and slap hit. The 0-1. Up the middle, picked up by, bobbled by Glassburn and everybody's gonna be safe. A rare mistake there by Glassburn. Got to give him an error on that time. Got to give him an E4. I agree. Here's Cronin coming to the plate. Cleanup hitter coming to the plate with the bases loaded. Senior captain. First baseman and pitcher. First error in a long while for the Sillers defense. First pitch is a strike. Look like a slider down and in. Cronin did single last inning. And this one's fouled off. 0 oh and 2. I smell another breaker pitch coming, Tom. It's wafting all the way up into the press box. Hit high in the air over to shallow left field. Backtracking and making the catch is McKenzie. And he almost fell there, but was able to pull Ugh. it down for the third out. As we head to the bottom of the third, it's the Hillers nothing, Westwood nothing. You are tuned in to the Division II South sectional finals on HCAM. Bottom of the third inning. Cole Glassburn stepping to the plate. Sitting ninth today. Lineup up in the pitch. Inside. 
Cole has trouble with the breaking pitch. He sits dead red. Glassburn went one for three, or uh, 0 for two rather, with a R sacrifice RBI and a walk in the win against Stoughton as that pitch is fouled away. He had a good season at the plate, hitting a 455 during the regular yeah, season. Yeah, he told me all about his good season. Swung, swung right through that. He's not embarrassed to make predictions before the game, but we didn't get here in time to find out how many hits and stolen bases he's going to have today. The one-two. Outside. Two and two. He will go the other way, gets his pitch. Hit in the air towards left field, and it is caught. What As I was saying, he goes the other way if he gets his pitch. Dan Delory making the catch. That'll bring up Ben McKenzie. Ben McKenzie had a pair of hits against Stoughton. Yeah, one, one famous call by you. It took you 10 seconds to complete the call. That ball was up 500 feet in the air. The longest call of a base hit ever. Put it in the Guinness Book of World Records. Oh, that thing was up there forever and ever and ever. Here's the 0-1. Outside. I'm guessing Doherty throws uh, low 80s. Let's say that's about right. I think he probably hangs around the high 70s. Hit in the air to the wall. This is very deep, and this is going to be very gone. Home run, Ben McKenzie. I don't know if that ball has fallen yet. That might be back to Hopkinson. Oh, come on, Tom. one nothing, Hillers. He absolutely tattooed that ball. Left fielder took one look and decided to forget about it. Ben McKenzie putting that past the 320 sign in left field. I would say that was probably well over 400. Steve Simo steps in. He's got power. Outside. He would have had a home run against Stoughton had that fence been just 10 feet in. And McKenzie showing off the power there. Stevie yep. Simos, the captain. Just a little bit high. Two and oh. He's been really, really impressive. You'd expect nothing less. Two-time consecutive Tri-Valley MVP. And he'll get a piece of this one over to right field. Could be trouble, and it's foul. Just foul. Two and one. Against Stoughton, Simos walked a pair of times, had an RBI double, scored a run, had a sacrifice fly out. Stevie Simos won the Marion T. Harris Award, the most coveted award given to a uh, Hopkins student for his academics and character. And he'll get a piece of this one over to center field. That'll drop in. And it's going to be a single for Simo. So one out single. It'll bring up Tommy Ambersoni. All around good kid, Stevie Simos. Coach Simo said his game's going to be a little bit emotional for him as he's coached his son from a wee bitty little toddler. And it could be his last game coaching his son. My son played with him, pick over, not in time. My son just a year or six months older than Stevie. They played when they were five, five and a half years old, if you could believe it. And the bun pulled back, pitch up high. Nice job by Wynn pulling that down. There is warm up action for Westwood in the bullpen area. Oh, warm up activity in the bullpen already. Well, obviously it's one loss elimination, so you can't mess around. Seamus Kilgarf. And the uh, manager's going to take a little stroll to the mound, see what Doherty's got to say for himself. 
Bobby says I'm good. So to recap the inning, it started with a fly out by Glassburn, then a solo shot by Ben McKenzie that still hasn't come down yet. And Tom, Steve Simo singing. Tom, it's come down that ball. <laughs> I, I swear know. to you. I didn't see it come down. Come on. I think it's the, the I law of physics. You didn't take physics. It's still flying somewhere. Anyway. It was hit out, of the, <laughs> hit out of the solar system. That was pretty close to the type of hit that he had in, at Stoughton at that neutral field. Oh, sorry about that. I told you I was going to talk about that. Yeah, Rossoni had a pretty good game against Stoughton. As Simos takes off the throw up, is not in time. Simos just making it look easy, stealing second. I knew he was going to do that, too. They ran on win a lot last game in Hopkinton, that 15-11 to 11 debacle. Against Stoughton, Ambersoni went one for three and was hit by a pitch and scored a run. Tommy will bunt anytime, any place, anywhere. Gets a piece of this one, and it's right to the first baseman. Simos back to second, two away. On the screws. Ronnie Sheamus will step in, the third baseman. And he had a good game against Stoughton. He went 2-4-2 two two at the plate, was hit by a pitch, and walked, and scored three runs, also had two RBIs. He got hit on the Electronon, remember? His funny bone? That's right. Almost had to come out of the game. He did, actually, for a pinch runner, but then did come back into the game. Tough was, kid. Absolutely. He was involved in a collision at the Pedroli tournament with Bobby McGuire. He was playing third. McGuire caught. Outside. Another good save by the catcher, Jake Wynn. McGuire got the bloody nose. He came out of the game. Sheamus had a bum knee. He went behind the plate. They ended up losing Donatic that day. Simos with a bit of a lead over at second base. Hit high in the air over to center field, and it's caught for the third out, but a solo shot by Ben McKenzie puts the Hillers up one to nothing as we head to the top of the fourth on H Cam. Top of the fourth inning, due up for Westwood, five, six, and seven. Eamon Doherty, Kevin McDonald, Cal Guarino. Brendan Kelly deals just outside. Brendan, a three sports star. Played football. Tight end action. A pitch just inside. Played center for the basketball team. Wasn't very good this year. No offense, it just wasn't a very good team. Well, they made the playoffs. Yeah, well, you know, they weren't going anywhere. This is... Hit in the air, a pop fly, foul territory, and no one will get to it. I think Simos lost it in the yeah, sun. Yeah, high sky. That's unusual for Stevie. That ball was hit very high, that's for sure. And he got a very well-deserved captainship, along with Ben McKenzie and Stevie Simos. The three amigos came up together as sophomores. Kelly... Pitched very well against Milton oh. the other day. Is that pitch just outside? Brendan wanted that one. So did Coach Simos. Three and one. We'll recap the roads for both teams to get to this point. Wind up in the pitch. Up high, and that's a walk. So a leadoff walk. That'll bring up Kevin McDonald, the DH. Come on, tuck in your shirt, kid. Westwood. Look like a ball player. Westwood Wolverines in the first round defeated 10th seeded Dighton Rehoboth 3 to nothing. Westwood, of course, the seventh seed. They then took down second seeded Whitman Hanson in the quarterfinals 4 to 3. And then after that, they took down Oliver Ames 6 to 2 as that pitch is in there for a strike. Oliver Ames was the 11th seed. And here is the Westwood Wolverines in the sectional finals. Yeah, Wolverines. There's a strike. Back them up, back to back. As for the Hillers, they had a bye in the first round. They took down Milton in the quarterfinals. Milton in the ninth seed, 12 to three. And then Stoughton in the semifinals in Stoughton. Fifth seeded Stoughton Black Knights. 12 to one was the final score in that game. Coach Simos changed his M.O. I thought he was going for the trifecta, the breaking pitches. But Brendan tried to sneak a fastball by him. 
Line up and the pitch. Outside. Yeah, good cover up there by Simos, one and two. I spotted Brendan Kelly as a 10-year-old that pulled his dad aside. I'm not trying to take any credit. I said, you know, that kid ought to take some pitching lessons. See you later. There is strike three, one away. That'll bring up Cal Guarino, the third baseman. And so he did. He took some pitching lessons, got some training down at uh, winning pitchers in Framingham, and then moved on with another pitching coach. Same place Josh Fisher got trained, and uh, Michael Vassell and Henry Weicker, all out of that stable. Line up and the pitch is up the left side, into left field it goes. So there will be two on with one out. A single for Cal Guarino. Cam Dayton, the right fielder, will step in. Seamus had been back a little deeper. He could have taken a drop step and maybe would have got that ball. But again, I'm up here and he's down there. Line up and the pitch. Oh. Inside. Brendan's got a one run lead to play with. The 1 0. There's a strike. Usually he's pitching from behind. Bleeders and bloops. Errors. He's had some tough luck. This is up the right side, picked up by Glasper. And throws a second for one. Throw to first is going to be off the mark. Gets away from Kester. And here comes a Westwood run. And we are tied at one apiece. An errant throw after getting out number two. Well, Kelly induced a double play ball, and as I was just talking about, some tough luck. So Guarino advancing to second. Doherty comes around to score. And Dayton thrown out, but does get the uh, RBI with the error. You gotta go E6 here. What do you think? Absolutely. Second error of the day for the Hillers. That pitch outside. So we're back to where we started at, tied up. Brendan's got to keep his composure. He knows there was an error made behind him. And this is hit up the line. It's a fair ball. And here comes Guarino to score, and the Wolverines lead it 2-1. to one. An RBI double for Ryan Shea. Coach Simo's gonna go have a conversation with Brendan. I'm sure it's a joke. I bet money it's a joke. Two outs in the inning, and Simo's also calling the infielders in for a talk. Well, the Wolverines strike right back after a solo shot from Ben McKenzie in the bottom of the third. It all started with a walk to the pitcher, Eamon Doherty, then Kevin McDonald struck out, a single by Cal Guarino, and then Cam Dayton, looked like he was going to be thrown out on a double play, but the throw got away from Kester and allowed Doherty to come around and score, and then an RBI double from Ryan Shea. I don't think that was a joke conversation. It was just Kelly and Simos, it would have been a joke. But he's probably saying, this is the sectional finals. Come on, guys. Get your heads in the game. Mental mistakes. I don't accept them. I don't think Kester would have had him at first base on the double back end of that double play anyway. Wind up in the pitch. There's a strike. Well, I mean, that was a tough throw to make if you're a glass burn. And sometimes in situations like that, you're better off just holding the ball. It was slowly hit. It would have been a tough play. And this is up the left side and picked up by the third baseman. Sheamus throwing a first off the mark. Everybody's safe. The third error of the game for the Hillers. That is certainly not what you want at this level. This is a rare sight to see the Hillers 
make this many errors. For Brenda Kelly, this is kind of all too familiar. He's seen this movie before. Dan Delory, the left fielder, steps in. Runners on the corners, two outs. Delay steal. An easy steal there for Bean. Two to one lead for Westwood. Couple of sevens, number sevens going at it. Two runners in scoring position. There's a strike. Well, both runs scored in this inning go down as unearned. Still two runs. Yep. Of course, that does not matter <laughs> scoreboard-wise. I got to believe Cole Glassburn will be the first one out of the shoot should Brendan falter here. Wind up and the pitch. Up the middle, slow roller picked up by the shortstop. Throw to first, into Kester it goes for the third and final out of the inning, but not before the Westwood Wolverines plate two runs. It's a two to one ball game as we head to the bottom of the fourth on H cam. The Hiller is trailing two to one. Connor Kelly steps in here in the bottom of the fourth. New pitcher for the Westwood. Wolverines, that pitch in there for a strike. Manuel Neville takes over on the mound. Lanky kid. Eamon Doherty lasting three innings, giving up one run. That pitch inside. Got good velocity. Last time I saw him, he was a bit wild. So we'll see what Mr. Nebels has done since last I saw him. Line up and the pitch. Kelly gets a piece of this one over to left field. It goes towards foul territory, and it lands foul. And the left fielder giving it everything he had to try to get to that ball ends up falling over the wall. Did he get Jerry Jeter or something? <laughs> it's the sectional finals. you got to go good all Good try. Out. Good. Yeah, it's absolutely. Get dirty. He almost got there, too. Yeah. He made up some ground for sure. Kelly Rakatori and Brendan Kelly to hit this inning. And Connor Kelly gets a piece of this one over to left field. It goes, and that'll drop in for a hit just in front of the glove of Dan Delory. A leadoff single for Connor Kelly. Delory almost had it, but was maybe a millisecond too late. Nebels is going to face three lefties in a row. One he's already pitched to. Got Drew Rakatori. And Brendan Kelly right behind him. Connor Kelly not really a threat to steal, but let's see Neville's move if he's got one. And this is hit in the air, pop fly over to the second baseman, will make the catch. One away, Brendan Kelly will step in. Brandon Kelly flew out in his only plate appearance in this game. And Stoughton, he had a triple, an RBI triple in that game and scored a run. Also a sacrifice RBI, is that pitch inside. He also had a walk. During the season, he hit a 364. And this one is followed into the backstop. Don't worry, Tom, it's the screen netting here. Don't worry, it's not coming at us. Uh, I wouldn't mind if one came at us. I'd like a souvenir. All right, Remy. I'll tell you what, I'm not giving it back, though. All right. One and one. Checking at first, runner slides back safe. Just as long as it doesn't spill my uh, sports drink. I can't. St I still can't get over. Wait for this pitch. And check swing, did he go? Yes. yes. Yeah. I uh, agree with that call. I hate to say you it. You do? I do. 
I think he went just a little bit too much. I'm a homer. I disagree. You know what? Now that I think about it, I disagree too. Neville deals the leg lift and the pitch. And that is tipped foul. Did hit the dirt before the catcher was able to make the catch. Still can't get over last game. Josh Fisher picking two with Stoughton runners off consecutively. Wasn't even close. Up high. The young sophomore pitched the game of his life. Won six innings. Didn't give up a run. The 2-2 two -two pitch. One on, one out. Fouled away. Connor Kelly started off the inning with a single. That center fielder better watch out. Playing awfully shallow for Brendan. Unless he thinks he's Amos Otis or something. And this is up the left side, takes a hop, picked up by the shortstop, throw to second, not in time. Everyone's safe. Infield single. That was a good play by Bean getting the throw over because it did not look like he was going to be able to do anything with it, but it's not in time. And next up is Larry's favorite player, Bobby Paliuka. Bobby Paliuka always comes, in, comes through in the clutch. Paliuka, the DH flew out in his only plate appearance so far in this game. Fan favorite, teammate favorite, broadcaster favorite. Line up and the pitch, outside. Runners will hold. Kelly was halfway to third. Bullpen activity. Sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. That's okay. I'm used Nebels to is going to get a little, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to step on you again, but <laughs> um, Nebels sure. is going to get a little talking too. Yeah, I'd imagine in this type of game, the leash is going to be pretty short, especially with a relief pitcher. Leash? And Kelly's heading to third, but it looks like it's just a talk. A little combo. Coach. So you got Connor Kelly at second, Brendan Kelly at first, one out, and Bobby Paliuka at the plate. So I don't know whether Hop can have a play on show bunt, try and bring the third baseman in and have Connor Kelly swipe third, but they're not buying that. Third baseman playing behind the bag. And this is up the left side, and it is foul. One and one. I have to give credit to whoever's operating the scoreboard today. They've been quick as lightning. Yeah, you haven't uh, used your clicker once today. I, I haven't needed it, and it's been accurate, which is very nice. Swing and a miss, and that's going to get by the catcher win and allow both runners to push up. Connor Kelly to third, Brendan Kelly to second. I don't think the coach is going to give uh, Paliuka the four-fingered salute. So he's going to have to uh, earn it if he wants to knock in some runs. Wind up and the pitch. In there for a strike, out number two. He's still my favorite player. Cole Glassburn will come up to the plate. Manuel Nevels trying to work out of this jam for Westwood. It was two on with one out at one point, but Bobby Paliuka strikes out. But Cole Glassburn a chance here with two in scoring position. Upstairs. Coach Simos likes to squeeze play. Line up and the pitch. Up high. Ben McKenzie waiting on deck. And the catcher, Jake Wynn, going to go talk to Nevels. Guarantee Glassburn's got the take. Imagine so. Ben McKenzie is due up next. Shall Glasper and reach? Got a left hander in the bullpen. Hey. 
Devils from the stretch. Wind up and the pitch. Up high. Three and O on Glassburn. Left fielder moving back for Glassburn. Neville's deals outside and there's a walk. Do you think that walk might have been a little bit intentional? Might have been, pitch around him, keep the force play in order. Well, I'll tell you what, if it was intentional, it was a bad idea for Westwood because Ben McKenzie stepping in. If he can be patient, he can tie the game. Two to one lead for Westwood. Baylor's have the bases loaded with two outs. Nevels will take time. Pitching out of the stretch. Nevels deals outside. One and O. Oh. Leg lift and the pitch. There's a strike, one and one. Nebels hasn't shown anything other than a fastball. Set to deliver. Swing and a miss, one and two. Nebels deals inside. He was going to stand there if that ball hit him in the, in the uh, derriere. Ooh, if the base is loaded, I would too. You almost had to edit something, Tom. Thank God we're not on seven second delay. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad here in Brockton for this South Division II sectional finals matchup. Wind up and the pitch. Outside. And the count is full on McKenzie, a walk would score a run. Nebels jerked that pitch way outside. And as you mentioned, Larry, Nebels can be wild at times. Is he a sophomore, this kid? I'll let you know in just a moment. All right, I'm very inquisitive. Wind up and the pitch. Inside, and a run's going to, no! The umpire called him out. What are you kidding me? That looked like it was inside to me, but McKenzie called out, and that will wrap up the fourth inning. Certainly a controversial call there. It was close to hitting him. It certainly was. In any case, we will head to the top of the fifth. It's Westwood two, the Hillers one. You are tuned in to the Division II South sectional finals on HCAM. Top of the fifth inning. A two to one lead for the Westwood Wolverines. The Hillers leaving the bases loaded in the bottom of the inning. Jack Hannon, Shane Cronin, Eamon Doherty do up. Second baseman, first baseman, and pitcher. Hannon was a real pain in that Hopkins game. This is hit in the air over to center field and caught by Amber Sony, one away. Well, it's getting down to the wire in this one. What does that mean? It's getting towards <laughs> the end, Larry, okay? The Hillers have left a good amount of base runners on today. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. They've left six base runners on. Inside. Uh, okay. I know Coach Simos has looked at every bit of tape that there's available on Westwood. The 1-1. One, one. Outside. Thanks to some media person. Wind up and the pitch. And this is up the middle. That'll trickle into center field. A one-out single for Cronin. That's his second hit of the day. Eamon Doherty will step in. 
There's been no warm-up action as of yet for the Hillers. Warm-up action continuing for Westwood. And I would not be surprised if that was the last inning for Nevels. Well, lefty going to come in and face Steve Simos. The bottom of the fifth inning. Wind up and the pitch. In there for a strike. Kelly working from the stretch, one on, one out. Fouled away into the backstop. Bat boy gonna grab that loose ball. I tried up for bat boy this year, but I got cut. <laughs> I can't blame him. That'll get away from Simos. And the runner gonna take off from first, throw up to second, he nearly got him. But the runner just beats it out. Yeah, first base was occupied, so the hitter was automatically up. But Cronin was heads up. He took off. That was a strikeout, so two away. Kevin McDonald, the DH, will step in. That would have been an interesting double play. Double play on a strikeout. Well, after what we've seen this week, uh, wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> Some freaky plays. Absolutely. Kevin McDonald is 0 for 2 so far today. Looks like a neutral site crowd, even on both sides. I would say. And to answer your question, Emmanuel Neville's the pitcher for Westwood is a freshman. In there for a strike. Ah, I didn't like that call, but I'll take it. I'll take it. It's a beautiful pitch right down the middle. <laughs> Runner at second with a pretty big lead. Line up and the pitch. Up the middle and Glassburn is going to pick it up. Throw to first, not a problem. Four to three for out number three. To the bottom of the fifth we go. Westwood leading Hopkinton two to one on H cam. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. Joe Frackleton on camera as we enter the bottom of the fifth. Steve Simos will step in. New pitcher for the Westwood Wolverines. Ryan Shea moves over from center field to take over on the mound. First pitch is a strike. Now in center field, it's Dan DeLore. He moves over from left field. And taking over in left field is Braden Lofnain. That pitch is low. Shea pitching from the third base side of the rubber. Hillers loaded up the bases last inning, but were unable to play to run. That pitch outside, two and one. Simos, Ambersoni, and Sheamus do up this inning. Watch for Simos call time here. Some point at this at bat. Wind up and the pitch, up high. Three and one. Simos is one for two on the day. And he'll draw a walk here. You know, one thing I've noticed about this home plate umpire, don't take off before he makes the call. <laughs> because I think that has maybe changed his mind a couple times. Well, maybe. Amber Sony will step in. And he's a button threat. I must say that twice every game. Simos with a bit of a lead. Outside as wind threatens to throw down. Third baseman on the cut of the infield grass. Checking at first. Runner just back safe. Good move. Credit while credit is due. That's a good pickoff move. Shea deals. There's a bunt. That's a fair ball up the left side. Picked up. Throw to first. Not in time. Everybody's safe. Should have let that one go foul. Yeah, that was quite a mistake there by Guarino. And now Ronnie Sheamus will step in. Well, 
Well, the Hillers have two on, no outs here in the bottom of the fifth. And threatening. Don't be surprised to see Seamus bunt his runners over. There's a strike. A pull of you. What are they threatening? Uh, they're threatening to uh, commit violence on the uh, baseball diamond. Maybe a gapper. That'd be nice and violent. One and one. And therefore a strike. Grabs okay. the outer corner. One and two. Inside, outside. This is not his not first his not his first rodeo. Shea. Cronin playing behind the runner at first base. Fouled away. Count remains one and two. Sheamus will be the starting catcher next year for Hopkinton. We actually have two, Bobby McGuire. Way outside, Ooh. two and two. Let his shoulder fly open on that one. Jake Wynn really had a reach to pull that one in. Wouldn't have been a bad thing if I got by him. Tell you that much right now. Well, for the Hillers. Hopkinton fans are right in the sun. That is fouled away. Count remains one and two. A good battle here between Ronnie Sheamus and Ryan Shea. The Hillers need a break here. Shea deals. Swing and a miss. And that is going to be an out. Both runners will push up. So Simos up to third. Ambersoni up to second. Seamus strikes out. One out in the inning. Connor Kelly will step in. Big opportunity here with two in scoring position and one out. That's payback for what Cronin did in the previous, previous inning. Kelly is 1-4-2 today, and the first pitch is ball one. Drew Rancatori on deck. Shea set to deal. In there for a strike, one and one. Wind up and the pitch. Hit in the air left side. Will it go foul? Yes, it will. And at a play. One and two. Both runners with a slight lead. Shea with the leg lift and the pitch. Outside. Nice pull in by Wynn. It was all right. Made it look harder than it really was. <laughs> two, two and two. This is glove side. And this is up the middle. That's going to get into center field. One run is in to score. Here comes Ambra Sony. The throw end is going to be cut off, and the Hillers reclaim the lead. And uh, the fans are going wild. Steve Simos and Tommy Ambra Sony score. On the two RBI single by Connor Kelly. Color man's going wild. About time they got a break. True Rankatori will step in. Connor Kelly not a threat to steal, but he's going to watch for pickoff. Inside. In the doit, they'd say in New York. In the doit. It'd be a mound visit here. No, well, they had some warm-up activity. A three to two lead for the Hillers here in the bottom of the fifth. Simos and Ambersoni both score on a two RBI single by Connor Kelly. Drew Rancatori is 0 for 1 today with a walk. He's about due. And I believe there is another pitcher warmed up for Westwood. Shall Shea continue to struggle? Another lefty. Rankatori got power to all fields. One out in the inning. Outside. Look that pitch all the way in. Good take by Rankatori. Yeah. 
And this is hit in the air over to center field. Could be trouble. And that is going to drop just in front of the wall. Here comes Connor Kelly rounding third. And he is going to try to score and will score. It's an RBI double for Drew Rankatori. I think I, I'm sorry, didn't mean to step on you, but I, I think I told you he's got power to all fields. A 4-2 to two lead for the Hillers, and he certainly does, Larry. The coach going to cross the line and take out Shea. Brandon Kelly will step in. We're going to have a pinch runner here for the Hillers. He's getting a little close. Rankatori looked a little gimpy as he was running the bases. Brendan Kelly's got a chance to help himself out a little bit. In the dirt. Nice play by Wynn. That was all right play by Wynn. One and O. Oh. Wind up in the pitch, up high. Jay's got to be careful with Brendan Kelly. Set to deliver. In there for a strike. Two and one. Take it all the way. He's a big boy. 6'2", 220 pounds. And this is hit in the air, high in the air, over to center field, and it's caught for the out. Two away. Bobby Pagliuca will step in. Runner on second, two outs. The Hillers have plated three runs in this inning and lead it four to two. Got to say, these umpires are hustling. They're earning their money. They don't have bellies like me. Wind up and the pitch. And therefore, strike. It was not Pagliuca's pitch there on the outside corner. It would have been a knob job. It's Pat Breton pinch running over at second base. Time called. Line up and the pitch. <laughs> Ball one. One and one. Shea delivers, swing and a miss. One and he, two. He needed a 10-foot pole with that, Tom. Just saying. He'll continue to pound the outside part of the strike zone. Up high. That was a little too far outside. Wind up and the pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike number three for out number three. But not before the Hillers plate three runs in the inning. And Hopkinton leading Westwood four to two as we head to the top of the six on H cam. Top of the sixth inning, a four to two lead for the Hillers. Brendan Kelly with the leg lift and the pitch. It's in there for a strike. Hitting. He wants this so badly he can taste it. I'm sorry to step on you there. Cal Guarino at the plate. Hit in the air over to left field, and that is going to be trouble. That'll get down for a base hit. Guarino around first, heading to second, and he is safe with a stand-up double to start the sixth inning. That'll bring up Cam Dayton with a runner in scoring position and no outs. Gonna have a pinch hitter. We just might. Nope, it is still Dayton out there. Are right, we gonna have a pinch runner? Yes, we are. So coming in to pinch run for Westwood is going to be Braden Lofnane. Lofnane. Did play left field last inning, so he is likely going to stay in the game. Four to two lead for the Hillers, but Westwood 
threatening a bit here with no outs and a runner on second. First pitch to Dayton is a strike. It's way out in front of that pitch. Breaking stuff. Wind up and the pitch. Outside. The 1-1. One, one. Outside. Jerked it outside. Held on to the ball a little too long. Two one pitch, leg lift and the pitch. And there for a strike, two got, and two. Got the corner, got the call. Sure the Hopkinton alumni are still in bed from a Friday night out. Set to deliver. Fouled away. And Simos thought it might have been fair, so tagged the hitter, but it was indeed foul. Why not try it? Oh, absolutely. Got to take those precautions. Game two's team is here. Swing and a miss. Out number one. Struck him out. Four strikeouts for Brendan Kelly. Ryan Shea steps in. Runner on second, one out here in the top of the sixth. Four-fingered salute. An intentional walk. Well, Ryan Shea has a single and an RBI double so far today, so that is probably a smart choice if you're gonna put someone on to put him on. Well, maybe uh, Coach Simos has got a long memory from that Greater New Bedford game where they intentionally passed Alex Reynolds twice to get to the cleanup better. Jimmy Bean will step in. Two on, one out. Kelly deals. In there for a strike. Infielders not keeping the runner at second close. Kelly from the stretch. He deals. In there for a strike. Bean didn't like it. Oh and two. From the stretch. Up the right side, it is a fair ball, and it'll be an out as Kester steps on first for the three unassisted. Both runners on base do push up. Guarino to third, Shea to second. Is he gonna give him an intentional pass, or no? We'll see, and Laurie steps in. Simos wants his infielders to knock anything down, keep the ball in front of them. Kelly deals. The pitch had all kinds of movement, but a little too much outside. One and oh. Leg lift and the pitch. There's a strike. The Wolverines are having a tough time with Kelly's breaking stuff today. One and one. Hit in the air, pop fly, and it is caught by Simos for the third and final out of the top of the sixth. To the bottom of the inning we go. It's the Hillers leading Westwood, 4-2 to two on HCAM. Bottom of the sixth inning, 9-1 and 2-2 up for the Hillers. Cole Glassburn, Ben McKenzie, Steve Simos. Line up and the pitch, swing and a miss. Glassburn is 0 for 1 in this game. 
Looks like it is still Shea out there for Westwood. I wonder what the leash will be with him after he struggled last inning. No yeah. activity in the Wolverine bullpen. I think it's just his game to ride out at this point. Check down at the third base umpire, said he didn't go. I thought he might have offered, but uh, we'll take it. One and one. Swing and a miss. One and two. Inside letter high pitch is not Cole's pitch. And this is hit up the left side. That'll drop in for a base hit. Glassberg going to round first, but it'll stay there. All right. A leadoff single for Cole Glassburn. And now Ben McKenzie will step into the right-handed batter's box. He slammed a solo homer in the third inning. Cole Glassburn, also known as Barney, Barney Rubble, he admits that he's the slowest kid on the team. Looks athletic, but he is slow as anything. Inside, almost hit him, one and zero. Oh. That was the same pitch he got called out in the last time he was up. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't quite that inside. It was close. Do I not get, I'm sorry. I'd say the home plate umpire has been very good today, though. Yeah, couple, consistent. Couple iffies, but he's been very good. One and one. No brain, no brain freezes over there at first base. Do not get picked off. The 1-1, one, one, and that hit him. Just a little bit inside. That may bring out the Wolverine manager. Shea's starting to get a bit wild again. Steve Simos will step up to the plate. Glassburn at second, McKenzie at first. And a big opportunity for the senior captain, Steve Simos. Steve Simos at a 5-14 during the season. And in the postseason, he is, I think, above that. That pitch outside. His brother will have to watch this when it comes up on YouTube. He returned to West Point to go continue his duty out there. The 1-0. Bunt pulled back, 2-0. And, oh. and uh, a threat by Jake Wynn to throw up to second. The Glassburn slides back. Who's going to have the bragging rights at the Simos home, Timmy or Stevie? Timmy, starting second baseman for the Army Black Knights. Hit high in the air, left side, foul territory, and it is dropped! So it'll be just a strike. Could have been an out, but it looks like he lost it in the sun. That's a boner. We'll take it. Stevie's got life. Two and one is the count on Simos. Stevie's brother Timmy's got one of the best fielding percentages in the entire country. Bunt pulled back, strike two. Two and two. All around good kid too. Tommy Ambersoni do up next. Inside and Simos tells the other runners to hold up. Full count. A walk here would load the bases with no outs. Wind up and the pitch. And that's fouled away. The battle continues between Stevie Simos and Ryan Shea. It's a good battle put up by Stevie. His brother, a graduate of Zavarian High, who uh, got knocked off by Taunton at a neutral side game. Two to nothing. <laughs> Time called. Samos steps back in. Leg left in the pitch. And it's a walk. Bases juiced for the Hillers. Deep breath by the Westwood manager. I think he's going to go to a, another pitcher. I think so. He just gave the uh, right-handed finger. Means he has to take him out. Tommy Ambersoni set to step in. We are going to have a pitching change, it appears, here at Campanelli Stadium in Brockton. But until we confirm that, we'll oh. keep things right here. I because he, it looks oh. like the manager just chatting with the pitcher right now. So perhaps Shea is going to stay in this game. 
And I don't know if he has anyone else warmed up, so if they do bring in somebody, it'll likely be someone that is already in the game. Oh, I thought he called for a relief pitcher. But that crazy rule is only if you got two men in the bullpen pitching and you put out your right hand, you can't bring in a lefty. It's one of those crazy baseball rules. The infield is in all the way around. First pitch to Amber Sony's a strike. Oh and one. A Glass, oh. Glassburn at third, McKenzie at second, Simos at first. Up high. Add a run anyway. Drag bunt is not out of the question by Ambersoni. Leg lift and the pitch. Fouled away. Still no out. One and two. Westwood's got to stop the bleeding here if they want to continue on. That was behind him. Oh. Two and two. Shea has been very wild in this inning and I have to admit, I'm quite shocked he's still in the game. Bullpen's quiet for Westwood. Oh. And that hit him, and that'll score a run for the Hailers. Cole Glassbird comes around to score, and the Hailers take the five to two lead. Now there's a pitching change, I'm sure. second trip. You know, if you're gonna get hit by a pitch, get hit by one that'll score a run. I don't think there's any better way to get hit than that. Yeah, Shea is coming out. So we'll have a new pitcher for Westwood. The Hillers leading the Wolverines five to two, bases loaded, no outs. The Hillers are three Westwood outs away from clinching the South Division II sectional title. A pitching change on the field. We'll take a quick timeout on H Camp. My name is Kurt. My name is Nina. A gun? I'm Haley. Hi, my name is Jake. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. <laughs> my name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al and Gal, and we love H Camp. Hey, I want to be uh, camp. We love H -Camp. H camp. And I volunteer for H Camp TV. And I watch H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. We love H Camp TV. Ronnie Sheamus stepping in to the right-handed batter's box. New pitcher for Westwood. Sheamus Kilgariff is out there to take over for Ryan Shea, fourth pitcher of the game for the Wolverines. And this is hit in the air over to left field and it is caught. Runner from third going to tag. And oh, he'll go back to third. Smart decision by Ben McKenzie. It was a good throw in by the left fielder, Lofnane. One away. That looked like the almost the exact same play Bridgewater, Bridgewater Rainham girls softball did last night. They charged on the third base line on a fly ball in the right fielder overthrew the catcher. Connor Kelly at the plate. Up the middle it goes. That's going to get into center field. One run is in. Here comes another. Two runs are going to score for the Hillers. It's a 7-2 ball game. A two RBI single for Connor Kelly. That's going to suck the life out of the Westwood fans. Ben McKenzie and Stevie Simos come around. They'll bring up Drew Rankatori. Things looking good for the Hillers of Hopkinton. Winner of this game advances to the Division II State Championship. Checking at first, runner slides back. The Division II State Championship scheduled to take place this coming Thursday night, 7 p.m. at Alumni Field in Lowell. Wind up and the pitch. Up the right side, picked up by the second baseman, throw to second for one, throw to first, in time. So it is a 4-6-3 double play, which gets Westwood out of the inning, but not before the Hillers plate three more runs, and they lead it 7-2 as we head to the top of the seventh. Westwood down to their final three outs next on H Cam. Top of the seventh inning, the Westwood Wolverines are down to their final three outs. 
Do up three, four, and five. Jack Hannon, Shane Cronin, and Eamon Doherty to face Brendan Kelly, who remains in the game, trying to pitch the complete game. The Hillers up by five, and certainly have some good security as we head into the seventh. Here comes Hannon. First pitch in there for a strike. Based on the last couple of years, the Hillers fans are a little bit tentative. Down oh low. Oh boy. Got to give him that pitch up. One and one. Another pitch down low, two and one. <laughs> Leg lift in the pitch. Outside. You don't want to give the Wolverines any life whatsoever. Outside, there's a walk. Shane Cronin will step in. Runner on first, no outs for Westwood. He's been a pest today, right, Tom? Certainly has, two for three on the day. Connor Kelly is ready to go, shall Brendan struggle? Runner taking off from first, and that's foul, and the runner will have to retreat. That's an interesting call there. You don't want to run into an out, but. Hiller's playing no, no doubles outfield. Kelly from the stretch delivers. Hit high in the air, over to center field, and caught. One away. Automatic. Runner remains at first. Eamon Doherty, the pitcher, will step in. Runner's probably going to take off. He does. No throw. Defensive indifference. Kester playing behind the runner. Oh, and one on Doherty. Wind up and the pitch. And there for a strike. Oh, and two. Deep breath now, Brendan. I know you can smell it. Come on, kid. Strike three, two away. Grab some pine. Hiller is one out away from heading to the state championship. Kevin McDonald, the DH, will step in. Trying to see if his dad's nibbling his fingernails off. It's very superstitious. Strike one. He'll be the hop happiest guy in Hopkinton. Hit in the air to the wall and see you later, home run. It's a seven to four ball game. A two run blast by Kevin McDonald. And this game not over quite yet. Coach Simos is gonna go get Brendan, I think. Cal Guarino set to step in. And do you leave Brendan out there to get that final out? Or do you take the ball? Let's see. He's going to leave him out there, I think. You're one, I think he's uh, saying you're one out away. Get it done. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. Don't make me bring in a reliever. You got this. After this game is through, we will have the trophy presentation. I believe there will be one to congratulate the sectional champions. Inside. A three run Hillers lead. Westwood down to their final out. Inside, two and oh. Connor Kelly knows that he's gonna get the call. Coach Simos took his hat off. 
and showed it to him. Strike one. Still got the gas this late in the game. Three run lead to play with. Strike two. Two and two. Give him the yakka, Brendan. And there it is. Strike three, and the Hopkins and Hillers are the Division II South sectional champions. The Hillers will head to the state championship Thursday night. Hillers get the seven to four victory. What a performance by Brendan Kelly on the mound. Unbelievable. The Hopkins and Hillers, your Division II South sectional champions. Larry, incredible. Absolutely incredible. Brendan Kelly, as I mentioned, had been a, the short end of uh, some bad luck. Pitched great these last three times, last three seasons. Lost, they didn't lose, but they lost to the Greater New Bedford Vocational on a walk-off in eight innings. Lost to Duxbury last year in the quarterfinals in nine innings. Brendan Kelly started both those games, and he goes out and starts this one and ends up with the victory. Complete game, seven to four. I couldn't be happier for this kid. Some sweet revenge for Brendan Kelly. And we're gonna keep things right here for the trophy presentation. Congratulations to Westwood on a great season and a great run, but a big congratulations to this Hopkinton Hillers team that have overcome a whole lot this season to get to this point. And now they are heading to the Division II State Championship. Let's set it down to field level right now for the presentation. Westwood has nothing to be ashamed of. They presented themselves well. Good competition here. If I could have the coach and captains come forward to accept their trophy. Congratulations, Westwood and Coach. Yeah. Also, Coach Samuels and his Hopkins team will move on now to the state championship game. Congratulations, Coach Samuels. Come forward with the captains of whoever, seniors. We also have a championship banner that we would like you to have a team picture over there and, and it will be taken so if you can all form over here, it would be great. Get, everybody want to join in the picture and get the uh, championship banner. Thank you, Westwood, very much and have a super summer. Thank you for being part of the tournament. Well, let's get into your final score. Hopkinson, Miller 7, Westwood Wolverines 4. Hopkinson will play in either Woodward or St. Mary's Berlin in the Division II State Championship. That's scheduled for Thursday, June 20th at the Alumni Field of Old. First pitch is 7 p.m. Congratulations to Westwood on a tremendous season. Good luck to their seniors and their futures. Look forward, make sure everybody's face can be seen. Don't you watch the coach in there? Get in there! We want to say thank you to all the fans for coming and cooperating. Well, there it is. Your Hopkinton Hillers are heading to the Division II State Championship. A 7-4 win over the Westwood Wolverines.
a tremendous pitching performance by Brendan Kelly, who goes the complete game. And many great offensive contributions by numerous players on this Hillers team. Your player of the game is going to be Connor Kelly. It was a close call between Brendan and Connor, but Connor went, he had three hits and drove in three runs and scored a run. And he has been tremendous with the bat throughout this postseason run. But the Hillers advancing to play Thursday night in Lowell, a 7 p.m. game against the winner of the Division II North Bracket as they get the job done here against Westwood, seven to four. Larry, any final thoughts? I'd like to see every former Hopkinton player to show up in Lowell. All the parents, all the students, get on the bus, get up there, and support your Hopkinton Hillers. Well, we are going to wrap up coverage of this Division II South sectional title game. The final score for the final time. Your Hopkinton Hillers become the Division II South sectional champions as they take down the Westwood Wolverines by a final score of seven to four. Joe Frackleton on camera, my broadcast partner Larry Sacklad. I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for watching Hopkinton Hillers baseball on HCAM. And you can bet we'll certainly be at the state championship Thursday night. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon.